and they followed okay. us home. They were, we were up there, I was home about uh, four days, I think, four or five days. Mm -hmm. And we heard that they were in there, we said, oh, well, if Tommy will be wheeled from Tom soon. But we didn't, we, he landed up there. Just rang him up and told us to come and pick him up. <laughs> <laughs> that was Tom. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we come in and we, he, uh, they stayed with us then until we, oh, we went back on the train together. And uh, on the way back, we were down in the Mallee, but his train broke down. So <laughs> we, we're sitting there and so we were playing cards, and there were four of us. So we just so we went on playing, and the next thing, we were it's quiet, no noise about me. <laughs> Look, couldn't see a soul about me. Got outside the train, and the, um, one of the train bucks working on the train came along, and we said, Where is everybody? And he said, Oh, they've all gone back up to the town. And he said, If I back, he said, oh, About half a mile back. Oh, okay, so we would all go back and got up there, there's people everywhere. I went into the pub and couldn't have wanted to get us something to a cup of tea, really. It sounds funny saying a cup of tea for Tom, but at that stage, it, but it was Beryl with him, you see, yeah, we'll get a cup of tea first. Mm. So the, uh, I thought, I'll go around the back, see, like you're around the back of the hotel, yeah. I went around the back <clears> and it was a lady come out the door just as I got round there and I said, oh look, I said, we just wonder if there's any chance of getting a cup of tea. So we got Tommy Derrick and his wife with us and uh, she said, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so we take her out she said, oh, they didn't have any eat. So anyway, the next thing she brought her a cup of tea out and then she brought a plate of cake out. She said, I've taken this out of my own kitchen. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the funny same. part about it was that we were just sitting there and talking as a woman sitting across the other side of the room come picked up the plate of cake and took it over and put it on their table. What? So we didn't get any of it. <laughs> uh. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we got down to Adelaide and made arrangements to meet the next day. So we met them. I can't think of the name of the place. It was in Rundle Street and it was downstairs. This, this restaurant was downstairs. Mm -hmm. So we went in there and we walked in and went, Jesus, there's people everywhere. I thought, oh, I'm going to be lucky to get a meal here. And the manager, I suppose he was, come along. He said, you people looking for a table? We said, yes, we are. He said, come with me. He took us over and he put us at a table, called a waitress over. He said, look after these people and give me the account. What? <laughs> <laughs> he recognised Tom from the paper of the paper. Ah. Oh. Sure, the paper. Well, he must have. We'd no other way he could have known. Yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, anyway, we were hangers on, but we got a free meal too. Uh, wow. Yeah. God, and I, we walked out, we're going, walking up the street. Oh, Jesus, I haven't got my hat. I'd have turned around and run back to get it. And they, uh, when I got in, I'd gone down the stairs and I see this fellow pick my hat up and he's standing waiting for me. Said, this is what you're looking for? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so man. he really looked after us. <laughs> So, I know you told me before, but that the day that Tom found out he'd, he'd received the VC, yeah. you were, you were oh, both yeah. on the block. Yeah, well, he was... Actually, Dad and Tom, I'd, I'd gone into Bury to get some chaff for Dad with the dr horse and dray. And that uh, used to go like along the what we call the bottom road. It was a little shorter that way. Mm. And uh, I just got back, and coming in the gate, and I'd look up, and my wife and Beryl, were, her mother and Beryl, were running down the channel on the foot, on the headland and they're screaming and carrying on. I was going, what the devil's wrong with them? Anyway, they got down there and they saw it's just come through that Tommy's got a VC. They rang up home and, and okay. got her and she got on the phone talking to them. So when they got down there, well, the, the, Tommy and Dad were talking to the neighbour, like Dad's neighbour, on the fence. Mm. And uh, this chap had been talking to said to Tom, he said, hey, will you get a VC out of that? And, oh, he said, I don't know. He said, I'm going to wait and see what happens. He said, don't get one. I'll bloody make you one out of ten. And then, like, within minutes, <laughs> it be confirmed that he'd uh, been awarded a VC. How did he take the news? He just was... Grown as well? Yeah. Wasn't excited or mm. anything about it. Just, oh, that's... Going to be so that's all. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, inwardly, you could, you could see he was a bit excited about it, but mm. he didn't sort of carry on and 
saw his arms in the air and things like that. Mm. Uh, the, so when was the first time you met Tom? I was about, I reckon I was the second year I had left school. I was going on 15. No, I would have been, would have been 15 if that was the case. Uh, we, was, we were picking, picking currants and the chap that was working for us, he, uh, he got stung with a bee. He was doing the cart again and he got his, got his bee sting and he, he was allergic to bees. So he was in a bit of trouble. Anyway, uh, they used to have a meals at a place in a cafe in Berry. Tom Quinn, a chap by the name of Tom Quinn used to run it. And uh, all these fellas that like, come from Adelaide, like from the port and other areas, they all seem to go in there and have a meal mm. one one night a week, yeah. like one mm. one meal a day, and like a night evening meal mm. there. Anyway, he uh, oh this chap that was working was a, was a, a, a half brother to Tom Quinn, and he said to Tom, he said, oh, he said I was working out at Foreman's Winky. He said, oh, he said I got a sting with this bee, so I won't want to work there. He can he do it? Like I was just lay off for a few days. Mm. So he said, you might be able to get the job out there. So, uh, he, so Tom took off the next morning. He was out there about half past seven or <laughs> might have been earlier than that because we used to start work at seven o'clock and uh, I'd only just got down the block and I was sitting in the channel. You know, we, I know you've seen the channels on blocks yeah. back those days yeah. and there's not many of them about now. <clears throat> and I was sitting in there and sharpening my knife on the bank of the channel, on the con on the concrete. and. Uh, Tom come up and and uh, he said, uh, well when I saw I saw him coming, I thought, oh Jesus, I, you know, I, I knew him, I knew, but I'd never spoken to him, mm -hmm. no, hadn't met him at all, but he had a bit of a reputation, and I was sort of, Jesus, I don't know how this is. <laughs> anyway, he uh, he said, yeah, you doubt your boss about, and I said, well, he should be on the way down. He said, I said he should be here in about ten minutes. He said, he said, oh, just look over that job, so and so and so, Jack Quinn. He said he. Can't work out work anymore on the picking, so uh, he said, "Come out and see if I can get his job." Mm. I said, "Well, Dad'll be here in a minute anyway." So uh, he, uh, it was only a few minutes, and Dad turned up. He said, "Well, uh, told him who he was and everything." He said, "I just wonder if I can get the job that Jack had." He said, "I'm looking for work." And uh, Dad said, "You picked grapes before?" He said, "Yes." He said, "Well, you can pick with a lab. You'd be right." So, mm. Way we went within ten minutes. We were the best of mates. <laughs> uh, very easy fella to get on with. Well, we found him as it was anyway. A very reliable team. Okay. And she uh, never let anybody down. No never did us anyway. Any, I remember once he was at Palmer. I had a well, by then. I had a motor, AJ motorbike two and three quarter, and. Uh, he, he, Tom was in a car that had an accident just down by the by the Farmer uh, uh, Oval, mm -hmm. and well, where the pub is there, just around that area. And uh, there was a bit of a shuffle there for a while. And anyway, I I, I said to him, do you, "Do you have to stay here?" And he said, "Well, no, I don't think so." I said, "Well, do you want to get out of it? We we'll take you home." Mm -hmm. He said, "Right, I said, <laughs> on the bike the way he went." You never heard any more about the accident, so. <laughs> mm. So he stayed with you after that, didn't he? Is that right? Um, stayed well, stayed with the, the stayed with our family, like yeah. at home. Yeah, yeah. Yes, they stayed with us. Okay. And they, uh, <clears throat> um, well, quite a number of times. You know, they'd come out for a weekend from the Berry. They, you know, when they're living in Berry, they'd come out for the weekend, probably once, twice a month. Have a weekend with us. Hmm. So he got on well with, with most of the other people up around the place. I assume he did. He uh... he got on well with it, with everybody. I yeah. think you know. I mean, some of the he uh, well, he wasn't the only one. There was a number of me used to drink a fair bit. Like hmm. Mildy was one, and there was uh, oh, he was four or five others. The same, but they were all good blokes at the same time. Yeah. Uh, they, they just lived it a bit, that, a little bit wild, sort of, but never did anybody any harm. And it was the times, wasn't it? I mean, it was it had been a bloody hard life beforehand because he'd, he'd scraped and 
Yeah, well, like when, he got a, when he first went up, his first year up, uh, he, uh, he pushed like he got to a, out of a rubbish dump, put together. Did you ever see that? I saw it up at Barry. Yeah, she was a well, it worked. It was, well, it was a bike that he used to ride out to, to work. Okay. So, uh, no, so he actually saw his bike up and wandered off. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that was a real bit, sir. Well, it was, but it, uh, it worked all right. Mm. Yeah, it must have. I mean, he, he travelled some miles on it, that's oh, for sure. Yes, he certainly did. I still can't believe that. It was a hell of a, hell of a trip mm. for a young lad. Yeah. Yeah, well... I'm not sure what just what age he was when he came up first, but he wasn't uh, he wasn't he wasn't twenty. He was under that. I think he was about seventeen. That's right. Yeah, he was. What, seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, yeah, well, he went up in thirty. Uh, well, 31. well, he would have only been uh, uh, twenty when he worked for us. He, well, he may not even been to him. Might have only been nineteen mm. at that time. Yeah. First, first time he worked there. Mm. Well, then he used to work on the on the harvest time, and then he'd come back in the in the winter time pruning and on work on the pruning and the citrus. But uh, so when we finished our, our our fruit, he used to go to the winery and he'd work there. Well, the wine that. wine grapes, you see, they were later than the drying grapes, yeah. and he'd uh, he, he'd work work there. And then I, I think he worked at a tarek too, for which was adjoining adjoining the not winery. See, in that tarek, that take tartaric acid or something out of all the uh, fruit, all the stems and stuff mm. and, and the skins. Okay. They'd all go in a tank and fermented <laughs> and then they'd make this stuff out of it. Yeah. Yeah, so he kept so he kept busy, so he had it all worked out quite well. Well, yes, he uh, he wasn't out of work very much. Mm. He, I mean, from, say, from thirty five around thirty five when he thirty four when he first started I think was. When did he first start talking about joining the army? Do you remember? I of... think it was a bit of a, a spur of the moment sort of thing. I don't think it was discussed very long yeah. because uh, we'd seen him on the weekend and then uh, uh, I think it was Thursday or Friday. That uh, Mum saw Beryl in the street. She said Tom had joined the army then. See, they joined, there was a. There was, I suppose they got. I suppose they got on the booze a bit, and there was a, an enlisting depot at at Glossop, mm -hmm. and uh, they all went out there together. It was Mil Mildy and uh, oh, hell. I can't think of all their names now. But they went out as a group, so... Yeah, it was yeah. about half a dozen or eight of them, I think, that went out together. Probably went out on push bikes. It wasn't that far. Well, Glossop was, what, about three, about four miles, three and a half to four miles from Berry, mm -hmm. where the depot was. That was a training depot. We were in the militia and we, before the war, and uh, we, we used to train there at this depot. Uh, Tom wasn't in that. No, oh, okay. It wasn't until the A when A more started the yep. AIF that he went into that. Hmm. So he basically joined up and he was gone shortly after. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he wasn't very long from mm. when he joined up that they were away. But he obviously kept in touch the whole time. Yeah, so it's funny, you know, <coughs> like the the tenth battalion they went to uh, to England. That was the sixth division, mm. and then the uh, next thing that the ninth went away, and then the seventh was formed. What? Well, in South Australia it was. Yes. Mm. 